the big day we've all been waiting for. Buffalo waiting. All of us are excited, a little nervous, but I uh, guess we're ready. Ready as we're gonna be. My name is Duke Phillips. I manage the Madness Zapata Ranch. It's uh, a little over 100,000 acres located in the San Luis Valley, uh, southern central Colorado. We manage it in partnership with the Nature Conservancy, which is the world's largest conservation organization. Back some years ago, the Nature Conservancy established the Medina Zapata as a conservation area. But we realized after trying to manage it ourselves that this landscape requires uh, skills that the Nature Conservancy doesn't have. Minnesota Ranch is one of the richest wildlife habitats anywhere and is a home to one of the largest herds of bison in the United States. We're trying to manage the herd as closely as we can to how they used to live in the wilds. But the landscape is different now. In the old days, bison herds had the freedom to move wherever they wanted. But in our situation, we have limited space. And so if the bison herd grows beyond what the land can sustain, they're going to overgraze it. So in order to protect the land and to maintain the amount of grass that's available for the bison to have enough food, we need to keep the number of animals to a sustainable level. And so our skills as ranchers come into play. It's once a year. We go out six days or so, and we gather about 1,500 head of bison, actually about 2,000 if you count the calves. When we gather them, we pull out the animals we need to sell. That money is what we live on, what we run the ranch on for the rest of the year. So everything's at stake. They've learned that the best way to move those animals is on horseback. And um, unfortunately, that is running next to the bison over ravines and all that kind of stuff. It's very dangerous. I try not to think about it. Basically, what we're going to be doing is trying to guide them. And so we'll come down and we'll ease up to them really slow. At some point, as we get closer and closer, they're going to get up and take off. And then everybody's just going to rush them and get them into a full, full-fledged flight. Our goal is to get the bison herd into a pen of corrals. We spend months preparing for a week of bringing the bison in. We have a limited number of chances, so each run that we make, we got to make sure that the fewest number get away because once they're gone, they will not be brought in that year. There's about 80 or 100, just I guess it's west of Tess's house, just north of the road. You ready, Boogie? Probably the easiest thing to do out there is screw up. Make one little mistake and everything's over. We were trying to get them through this gate, but I was out of place, and so was everybody else. What happened? Did you start peeling out? 
It was going good for a bit. We pretty well outran us. I think we got maybe 20 head in out of that group and there's maybe 120 in there. These buffalo are wild and they're not used to being handled. You can't forget that they live out there. This is their world. And you're going out into it to try to manipulate their movement. Uh, if you're not very thoughtful, you're going to get beat every time. I was born in Venezuela on a ranch that my father ran for Nelson Rockefeller. Ranching has been a, a way of life for my family for several generations. I never imagined that I would be working with uh, a conservation organization, managing a bison ranch and especially a wild herd of bison. But uh, as I have worked more and more closely with the Nature Conservancy, I realize how important our relationship is. Our responsibility as ranchers has changed a great deal from raising beef to becoming stewards of the land. We will never have a majority of the landscape under some sort of formal protection. It's really ranchers that have a substantial uh, portion of land under, under their stewardship and really ranching that can be the right hand to, to conservation. Well, we hope the, the way that we're uh, managing the Menasapata Ranch would be a model for other ranches of private ranching and a conservation community balancing conservation and economics, which uh, has to happen. When we gather them, we run them through the chute. We vaccinate heifer calves. We pull out the animals we need to sell. Two-year-old. A lot of people don't realize bison as a wild animal is extremely endangered. There are only 20,000 in North America now. And to give you some idea of, of the tremendous decrease in animals, it's estimated there were 50 to 80 million bison originally. The rest of the bison that don't get shipped off get turned back out onto the ranch. Ranchers have the potential of playing the biggest role in caring for the land because our roots go very deep there. And if we're going to survive into the future, if our kids are going to have the same options that we have, same liberties, we're going to have to figure out 
how we're going to manage the natural world without the parameters of nature the way it was before we arrived. To me, ranching is about living with the land. I feel a sense of honor of being entrusted with its care because um, I, I live on it and I am part of it. It's part of me. Today's Thursday, our last chance to get something in. We lost twice as many as we normally have, but every year is different, and we have to understand that. Okay, thanks. Bye. Hundred head. Stevie boy, you ready? can never do it right there. <laughs> Thank you. 